Welcome to this teaching where I want to share something about the church building. I'm doing a series about the house church and how we need a reformation of the church if we want to be effective in making disciples. As I often say, you cannot measure a good church for the size of the building or the size of the economy or the activities or how many people who attend there. Jesus did not have a church building. He did not have a big economy. He did not have a lot of people attending. But he did what we all call to do. He made, he made disciples and he transformed the world. You can have a church building. You can have a good economy. You can have a lot of activities. You can have a lot of people attending there without making disciples. You're actually doing the opposite. You are hindering people from stepping into the life Christ has for them. And I'm doing a series about the house church and how we see a re- need to see a reformation of the church. And today I want to talk about the building. I'm standing here in an old chapel. And the building is important. How we meet is important when it comes to how to make disciples. The building creates something in us. We often misunderstand it that we think, whoa. Like, whoa, we feel God in this room, but it's not often God we are feeling. We are feeling the room in itself. For example, I went to Rome some years ago to the St. Peter Church in Rome at the Vatican. The biggest, biggest, biggest church on earth. And when you step into St. Peter's Church, you step in and everyone who step in, it is huge. It is amazing to look at the structure, the building. And many people step in and say, like, wow, God is here. You see? Like, I, God is the same as much at a McDonald's as he is in the church, St. Peter Church in Rome. I would say there is more demonic thing at St. Peter Church in Rome than there is on McDonald's. What is it people feel when this, you have never heard people step into a McDonald's or Burger King and like, oh, wow, do you feel it? God is here. But they say that in St. Peter Church, they say that in many other churches. And what you feel is not the presence of God. What you feel is the room. And we often being deceived. We think the church building, what we feel is God, but it's not. It's the room. And the room is making, creating something in us in, that is often not so good. It's often bad. For example, if you look at a room like this, when you step into the room, what you feel here and what you get out of being in a room like here is very different than what you would get if you have met with the same people, but in a home setting, in a church where people were sitting, looking at each other face to face, where people were sitting in the couch, where people were relaxing. There could even be somebody who's speaking, but instead of speaking behind a pulpit, distance from the people, he's speaking in the middle of a certain circle without a pulpit in a home setting. And this is so much more powerful. And this is how Jesus did it. Jesus did not, and the early church did not, have a room like this, with pews like this, and a platform like this. They met in the homes. They were sitting in the homes and preaching in a different setting. And the setting is very, very important when it comes to how to make disciples. I remember some years ago, I went to uh, Las Vegas, and I was supposed to speak in a church in Las Vegas, and I came into the church. It was a Pentecostal church. And I stepped into the church and I, was, I stood behind the platform and then I looked down at the people. And I was like, this don't work. Because their mind was not on discipleship. Their mind was not on, hey, when we come together, everyone has something to share. Their mind was not on the New Testament kingdom of God, church, their mind was on, hey, we are going to have another meeting, like we always do. We expect a few songs, an offering, 
and, and a few information, a few more songs, and then I'm preaching, and then finally we go out and get coffee. That was their mindset. And I was there looking at them. My heart was sincere. I want to train them. I want to teach them. I want to make disciples. But I understood I cannot do that if they are in that m mindset they were in. To change the mindset, I needed to change the room. So I went to the pastor and said, excuse me, do you have another room? Do you have another place to meet? A place with a whiteboard, for example? And he said, yes. And he took me into another room. There was no chairs, but there was a whiteboard. I said, is it okay I, I use this room instead? Yeah, you can do what you want. Okay, thank you. So I went into the big room and I said to everyone, hey, everyone, uh, the, the meetings have just been cancelled. Sorry for that in that sense. I'm actually not sorry, but the meeting have not just been cancelled. But you who want to join in the other room beside, I want to invite you in to our discipleship training. If you want to join, take a chair with you, take your Bible and notebook, and let's do discipleship training. So they stood up, they took their chairs, went into a different room, a room without pews, a room without a platform, a room where there instead was a whiteboard, and everyone just put the chair wherever they want, and we sat in a kind of more circle, and just... Just by changing the room, by changing the setting, even by changing the name for worship meeting, Sunday worship to disciple training, right away I changed the mindset of people. Now people was not in the state of, um, what is it, mental state of passivity. I'm sitting here because I'm in church. Now they were in a state of, I'm here to learn and to grow. And we had an amazing evening. I was discipling. I was training. I was teaching. And they were receiving an amazing fruit came out of it. What I saw in that room, I could not have done the same in that other room. Why? Because the mindset was not there. The, the room is important. Another example, I was in Poland doing a meeting and some years ago. And I was supposed to speak in a Pentecostal church. But as soon as I came, I was excited, I was on fire, and I was praying in car. But as soon as I came into the room, I just stopped. And I looked, and I was like, what? And I said to my friend, but is this not a Pentecostal church? And he said, yes. But it don't look like a Pentecostal church. It looked like an old Reformed church. Oh, oh, you have to understand, there's two different kind of Pentecostal churches in Poland. This is one of the more... All reform Pentecostal churches with a lot of tradition. Ah. Just stepping into the room, I just felt the freedom, the excitement, the joy was taken away from me. I felt the religious mindset right away. And this is how it is. We need a reformation of the church. We need to come back to true discipleship. And if we really want to do that, we need to change the setting of how we meet. Because in a church like this also, let's say the pastor is speaking and there is something that is off. You will not live, uh, excuse me, pastor, I don't agree with what you're saying or I don't understand what you're saying. Can you explain it one more time? You will not do that in a setting like this. But if you met in a house setting, People are sitting with a cup of coffee in their hand maybe and have been small talking and relaxing and laughing and then somebody shared a word and you don't understand it. You say, hey, excuse me, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Can you explain it to me one more time? This is discipleship. We need to come away from this big structure that is not found in the Bible. The early church did not have a fine church building where they met every Sunday. They met daily. They met as often they could and they met in the homes. It was in the home they did communion. It was in the home they heard the word. It was in the homes they met. And this is what I believe we need to see again. Also, we are living in a time right now 
with the corona and the lockdown and the, the restriction. And this is just a, a picture of what is coming in the future. And what do we see right now? We see that the church, tradition church cannot survive in a season like this. They are locking down. They are losing a lot of members. But the church Jesus building can survive and it will even strive and grow in a time like this, in a time of persecution. Underground churches in China that exploded in a time of persecution did not mean they were underground, like in a basement. It just mean that it was not organized, it was not public, it was not uh, controlled by the government. It was simple, organic, and they met in homes. And there is something beautiful with meeting homes. The setting is important. The room is important. It becomes more family. It becomes warmer. But it's also much cheaper. It's much cheaper. It's much cheaper. It's much cheaper. Why? Because you use your home anyway. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on the building. You can keep it simple. So this is one of the teasing more I want to do about the house church. I'm going to talk about many, many different things when it comes to, to the house church and so on. The room is important. The setting is important. And the best thing I've seen is a home. A coffee shop could also work or place or outside in a park or a bench. It don't have to be in a home. But a church building like this is not the most effective in making disciples, in experience it as a family, in coming close to each other. We need to change the mindset of people before, so they're able to receive before we can change the heart of the people so they can start to follow Jesus when it comes to disciples. So welcome to this teaching about the church building and I will come out with more teaching later. I will send link here to the other teaching I've done about the church and what we are seeing God is doing when it comes to church. It is beautiful. And I want you to all see your home as a church. You are priest in your home. Your bathtub is not just a place to take a bath. A bathtub is a place to baptize people. Your kitchen is not only to serve food for the body, it's also to serve food for the soul. It's also to preach the gospel. Your living room is your meeting place. Start to invite people over. Start to meet with people. Share Christ. Make disciples. And don't let anyone look down at you and think, hey, this is not a real church because we meet in a home. This is not what you find in the Bible. What did you find in the early church was not this. What you found in the early church was homes. Homes, homes, homes. Without pews, without a platform, without a program, homes. I don't say that you cannot also meet like this, but homes, I believe, is the most important. It was how Jesus did it. It was how the early church did it. And this is what I believe we need to do today. And understand that God is not more here than he is in your home. This is not a holy place. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, where two and three are together. He is in the midst of us. That is where the true church are. God bless you. And see the other videos in this link. And I'll come out with more videos about the church and what we see God is doing later. Bye-bye.